It was only last Thursday that I spoke to Captain Jerry Northwood on the RFA Fort Victoria about successes they'd had against Somali pirates. But even more has happened since then with the capture of another suspected pirate boat in the Indian Ocean. Sailors and Marines from the ship joined other NATO vessels to intercept a dhow off the Somali coast. Thirteen men have been taken into custody. I spoke to him earlier on a ship to shore link when he agreed a lot can happen in a short space of time. Yes, well, there's a, there's a lot going on out here, and in fact, as, as we're speaking at the moment, there's um, one of the other NATO ships is involved uh, with, a, with a Dow at the moment. So in the space of a few weeks now, we've, um, we've been successfully taking down um, uh, quite a number of their, their pirate action groups, and we got a call that uh, a, a merchant vessel had been attacked by a, by a Yemeni uh, Dow, which is one of these little local fishing craft. Um, and there, there were some skips that had come from that, that uh, fishing vessel and attacked the uh, merchant, mer merchantman. So a, a, a U.S. Uh, destroyer, um, the Carney, was the nearest vessel, so she, she steamed to the scene of action. She got there that night uh, to locate the Dow, and then we followed up in the morning, and then we, between the pair of us, we were able to execute uh, an operation to um, capture it. How did the pirates react? I understand that there were warning shots fired and they seemed, uh, their attitudes seemed to be very relaxed about your approaches. Well, I think, um, I think hope is one of their principles of war, actually. I think they, they take the view that um, uh, if they just sort of stick it out, they might just make it back to Somalia. Um, and so they try to create, create the impression that, uh, that they are fairly relaxed and not, not worried about what you are potentially about to do to them. Um, but at the same time, they're well armed and they're sitting there on their weapons and, uh, and so you have to take quite a lot of precaution to ensure that um, we don't put our own people in uh, unnecessarily in harm's way. But they use those weapons and they, although they're, you, know, you, look at them, you look at them and you look at these rusty old AK-47s, the fact is they're still clean on the inside, they do fire and the Somalis do use them. And you took them on board RFA Fort Victoria where they were offered a, a shower I understand. Uh, what was their behaviour like then? They are um, they're, they're, their moods vary, and they are generally a pretty cheerful bunch. Um, they don't know what's happening to them. Uh, when they consider what may happen to them in terms of some sort of legal finish, uh, that does dampen their mood. Um, I suspect the times when they're more cheerful, they, 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 um, they're living in hope that they're going to go back to Somalia. You said they were cheerful. I, I, I read one piece of information that said when, when the Royal Marines boarded their dough, they were actually trying to get them to sing songs with them at night, pop songs. Well, that was, um, that was overnight on the first night, and, um, uh, and amongst the, the, the Somalis, there are, some, uh, there are one or two of them who speak good English, good French. Um, they've, uh, yes, you're absolutely right, there's a bit of sing singing talent there. So in that first night, yes, there was a bit of a, bit of a sing-song going on. Actually, it works very well for us because we're establishing a good rapport with these fellows, and we're getting a lot of information.